All right, let's get uh, started with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this uh, time together, for the, the nice day, for the opportunity to uh, gather together in Thy name. Pray that Thou would be with us as we open Thy word. Pray that Thou would use it to draw us closer to Thee. And we ask it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, uh, as I was mentioning, um, last week we started chapter uh, 22 of Revelation. And that was basically the end of uh, talking about the New Jerusalem. Then from chapter, from verse 6 on, Revelation 22, verse 6 on to the end, uh, we're not talking about New Jerusalem. He refers to it once or twice, but we're not really talking about New Jerusalem or describing it anymore. These are kind of the final thoughts of the book of Revelation. And as we're going to see, uh, specifically from the first couple verses, this is tying us back to John. That's why I titled it John Back on Patmos. Um, because we started on Patmos, and so that's where we'll go to next. Uh, I'll go ahead and read. Um, I guess this time I'll read the whole passage. It's not that many verses, and then, and then I'll uh, comment on them uh, verse by verse. Revelation 22, 6. Uh, and he said unto me, and this is the angel talking. Oh, by the way. Um, this final section here, it's a little difficult sometimes to figure out who's speaking. Sometimes it's the angel, sometimes it's John, sometimes it's the Lord. So I'll, I'll kind of make comments as we go as to who that is. Uh, and he said unto me, so that's the one that was talking to him before, which is an angel. He said unto me, these things are, these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of, the, of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. And I'm going to read verse 16 real quick. Uh, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. There's more to the verse than that. So the point is, the one speaking there uh, that said, I am Alpha Omega, is Jesus. He says, he says he's Alpha Omega, then he says he's Jesus. We go back to uh, Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, kind of the center of the first page of your handout. And uh, what we're going to see is, this chapter is tying the book of Revelation together, and the book of Revelation ties the whole Bible together. There are a lot of things come together in, in the book of Revelation, and uh, a lot of the book of Revelation comes together in, uh, in this chapter, ch chapter uh, 22. So in chapter 1, verse 1, uh, well, first of all, look at verse 9, um, Revelation 1, 9, I, John who am also your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos. So that's where he was when he, when he got this uh, message from the angel. It came from God. For the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So he was on Patmos. And what we're going to see is um, that's where he was. it said he was going to see these things. And it said that in Revelation 1.1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and sent and by his angel unto his servant John. So it came from God to the angel to John. 
and then to us. So in 1.1, it said, this is what I'm going to show you. In, um, in uh, one, uh, 22.6, uh, it basically said, this is what I showed you. Uh, these, uh, these things are faithful and true. The, God of the, uh, the Lord God of the Holy Prophets sent his angel, he sent, in other words, past tense, to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. So 1.1 1, 1 said, this is what we're going to do. 22.6 says, this is what we showed you. Okay. Verse 7. <clears throat> now, verse 7 uh, ties us back to verse 3 of chapter 1. So notice the, the commonalities between uh, Revelation 22.7 and Revelation 1.3. Again, they're, they're looking back and seeing things that said was going to happen. Um, it starts with, Behold, I come quickly. I'll address that in just a second. And then it says, Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Well, in chapter, Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, it said, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written for the times at hand. So they told us in 1.3 that there was going to be a blessing, and then in, in uh, 22.7, um, it said, Blessed is he that keepeth. So it ties those, those two passages together. Another reason we know that... Um, uh, we're back with John on Patmos. We're not, we're not, he's not talking about the future anymore. Uh, we're talking about, at least he's not describing New Jerusalem and the tribulation and all that. <clears throat> it also ties forward um, because it said in verse 7, Behold, I come quickly. It ties forward to verse 12, which is in our passage, where it said, Behold, I come quickly. And uh, by the way, when it says, I come quickly, it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the Lord Jesus Christ speaking when it says, I come quickly. Uh, and also it ties us to verse 20, where it says, uh, he should testify these things, says, surely I come quickly. So, so the, surely, the, the I come quickly each time is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. And, and we, we know from, uh, from reading our Bible and all that after 2,000 plus years or so, we know that quickly doesn't mean soon, right? Because it's been a couple thousand years. As a matter of fact, uh, Revelation uh, 2 and 3 was about the church age, which is about 2,000 years long. So therefore, uh, encompassed in the uh, book of Revelation, um, uh, from, from, from getting it from uh, John getting in the first place to when uh, these things start happening in the future um, is uh, 2,000 plus years. We get to verse 8, uh, and, and, and John is going to testify that he saw and heard these things. He says, and I, John, saw these things, so he saw them and heard them. That's what the Lord uh, took him to the, uh, the future to do. I saw, I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had seen and heard, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. He did that before, and the angel said, don't do that. He's going to tell him that again, verse 9. Then saith he unto me, see thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Don't worship me, worship God. Okay, that's, that's a good uh, admission for us today. Uh, don't worship some man, who, whoever that man, man, man might be. You don't worship a man, you worship God. Verse 10, uh, Revelation 22:10, 10. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Now there's one place, there's one exception. I think it was in chapter 10, but it was one exception where he's not supposed to uh, tell what it was yet. But, but th that's the exception. Otherwise, the uh, Revela book of Revelation is, is seal not. That's the command. Seal not the sayings of the prophets of this book for uh, the, the, the time is at hand. That reminds me of um, the, the, the antithesis. The opposite of that is in uh, Daniel. So down near the bottom of your handout, Daniel chapter 12. Uh, I just gave you, I didn't, I'm not going to get into the context, but Jan Daniel, uh, of course, is talking about end times as well. Daniel 12, verse 4, uh, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. So he was told to seal the book even to the time of the end. Well, in Revelation 22, he said, don't seal them, okay? 
Um, many shall run to and fro, and, sh and knowledge shall be increased. And Daniel uh, 12, 9 said, And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. So Daniel got to read it, but he, but he couldn't tell everybody else what it, was, uh, what it was all about. Or he got to write it down, I should say. I'm not even just going to say write it down. He, 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 was, he wasn't allowed to, to put it out so everybody else could read it. So it would seem like at the end, it's until the time of the end. Well, we're at the time of the end here in Revelation, uh, you know, the, the end times. So this must be when it becomes unsealed. And, and so Revelation must be kind of uh, making uh, real what Daniel was talking about, the things that Daniel was talking about. Verse 11, Revelation 22, 11. And I, I kind of referred to this uh, uh, last week, I believe it was. It says, uh, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. I'm emphasizing the still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. The implication is that when you die, you stay in whatever state you are. When you die, you're unjust still, filthy still, righteous still, or, or holy still. The exception would be the church age believer. So we bottom of your um, um, first page, your handout, 1 Corinthians uh, 51. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Uh, really, I want to look at verse uh, 51, and then, but I'm just going to read the rest because I like it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So there's an exception. Church-age saints are going to be changed. It says, uh, in the moment, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. So at the rapture, uh, the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So if you were, if you were unrighteous in some way, you're not going to be unrighteous anymore if you're a church-age saint. For this, verse 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. That's a, uh, an interesting uh, verse, death is swallowed up in victory. We read in chapter 20 that, uh, that there's no more death, 21 even, 21, um, no more death. Second page of your handout. And we're at um, verse 12, Revelation uh, uh, 22, 12. And he said, and Behold, I come quickly. And we already talked about that. Quickly doesn't mean soon. And then it says, My reward is with me um, uh, to give every man according as his work, sh work shall be. So I gave you a couple of passages about, about uh, uh, the judgment seat of Christ in Romans and then, and then uh, at works after salvation in a couple of other passages. In Romans chapter 14, it's a reminder that the, the church age saints will stand at this because that's who it's written to, Romans. Uh, Romans was uh, 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 Roman believers, which included uh, Jews and Gentiles, mostly Gentiles. Uh, Romans 14, 10, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Now remember, we've, had this, uh, we've talked about this before. This is in contrast to the great white throne judgment, which, is, which happens in uh, Revelation uh, 20. So this is for church age saints. And we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. But it's not for our sins. Those have been uh, taken care of when Jesus Christ died on the cross. But w something will be judged, and it's based on uh, the next uh, uh, two passages, mainly in uh, 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. In other words, you've got to be saved first. If you're not saved, you don't have that foundation. Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Once you've laid that foundation, Jesus Christ, and you're, you're born again, now if any man build upon this foundation, so here's your, your building upon it, 
And what are you building? Well, it's one of six things. Uh, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, and the idea is these gold, silver, precious stones will abide the fire. They're gonna be, it's, we're going to see in the next few verses, they're going to be tried by fire. You can put gold, silver, precious stones through fire, and, it's, and, and they'll come out okay. Uh, or there's wood, hay, and stubble, and they're gonna, if they go through the fire, they're not going to come out okay. They're going to be burned. Verse 13, 1 Corinthians 3, 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, shall, because it shall be revealed by fire. There's the fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of, uh, of what sort it is. Now, this is not works for salvation. We're going to see that in just a second. This is works you do after you're saved because you're saved in order to receive a reward. Verse 14. If any man's work abides, so that would be the gold, silver, precious stones, uh, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So there's the reward, the Revelation 22 and verse 12 is talking about, my reward is with me. Um, if any man's work shall abide, which he hath built on, he shall receive reward. If any man's work shall be burned, that would be the wood, hay, stubble, he shall suffer loss. So people that want to think that you uh, lose your salvation, they try to make that, oh, you're, you, you lost your salvation. That's not what it says. As a matter of fact, it's not even talking about save it, salvation. The rest of the verse says, he shall suffer loss, loss of what? But he himself shall be saved, yet so is by fire. So it's not the loss of his soul, not the loss of his salvation, it's the loss of his reward. So it's a reminder that as we travel through this life as children of God, we are supposed to be doing works for God. And, and if, we, if we get through the life with, uh, with uh, good works, uh, uh, gold, silver, treasure, stone, we're going to get a reward. If we don't, and that, that, that will manifest itself at the judgment seat of Christ, if we don't, we don't get the reward, but we don't go to hell. We, that's already been taken care of. Jesus Christ died on our, uh, for our sins on the cross. Uh, Ephesians 2.10 is right after 2.8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Then the very next verse says, so that's telling you can't, you can't be saved by your works. And then verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. In other words, once you're in Christ Jesus, it's unto good works. Now, it's him, it's him working through us, but still, it's unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So, once you're saved, you should be walking in good works. Now, again, it's, the, it's, the, it's God the Holy Spirit working through us, but still, we ought to yield to him so that that can, that can happen. In contrast to that, and similar, similar wording to um, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 is Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. So now it's talking about salvation. Not by works of righteousness which, done, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's clear by the context it's talking about salvation. By his mercy he saved us. Now, this is not talking about works, just like Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Um, well, it's not talking about works to be saved. And then in verse 13, Revelation 22, 13, <clears throat> it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So I'm going to look at a couple of verses that, uh, that uh, talk about that. Uh, the... When we started this whole thing back in uh, Revelation, I didn't give you this verse, but in Revelation 1, um, I think it was verse 11, yeah. So it was, it was Jesus uh, talking uh, there, and he said, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. So in the very first chapter of the, of the book of Revelation, he said, I am Alpha and Omega. In the last chapter of the book of Revelation, he said, I, I am Alpha and Omega. And when I read the passage, the whole passage before, I gave you the first part of verse 16 where it says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto these, uh, these things in the churches. So the Alpha and Omega there in verse 13 is Jesus in verse 16, so, so to be clear. In Isaiah 44, this is where the Trinity comes into play. And we can see, we can see uh, different parts of the Godhead in the Old Testament. Isaiah 44, 
And uh, verse 6, Thus saith the Lord, notice the all caps there, uh, the King of Israel, so the Lord, that's Jehovah, if it's all caps, God or Lord, it's Jehovah. Um, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. Well, is Jesus Christ God? Yes. Is God the Father God? Yes. Is God the Holy Spirit God? Yes. So is there another God? No, there's one God, three and one. Three, three uh, persons of the Godhead in one. I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there is no God. So there's the, uh, the first and the last, just like it said in Revelation um, uh, 22 and verse 13. Another similar passage in Isaiah 48, kind of the middle of the second page of your handout. Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am he, I am the first, I also am the last. Verse 17, uh, it, it was in the context, and this says, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So the Lord again, the Je Jehovah here, is the first and the last. So the Jehovah, the Old Testament, is the first and the last, and Jesus in the, in the New Testament is the, the first and the last. I am the, the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Now we get to verse, uh, I'll read 14 and 15 together. Revelation 22, 14 and 15 to pull it all together. I believe 14, or rather 15 is contrast with 14. So we've got, so 14 is a little bit of a difficult passage, but I think if we read it, it's a contrast to verse 14. I think it makes sense. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Well, we know from pre previous uh, messages that uh, y y you can't get in to the New Jerusalem, which is the city it's talking about there. You can't get in unless you're saved. And you can't get in, you, you can't have right to the tree of life unless, unless you've done um, uh, the things that you need to do, which is accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Okay. So, um... So I believe, and I'm going I'm to comment on it briefly, uh, just in a second more. I believe that this is a warning to people, mainly in the tribulation and millennium, uh, not to be found in the second group, but to be found in the first group. Because if you're in the second group, which is the uh, without our dogs, let me let me read 14 and 15 again. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city, save people. Uh, then the unsaved without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever worketh and maketh a lie. I don't believe that those people exist in eternity. Now, I could be wrong. I may, I may find myself out there, and then the Lord will straighten me out. But I think this is just contrasting the, ver the people, the saved people in verse 14 with the uh, unsafe people in verse 15. I gave you one more passage um, in um, Ephesians 2. Now, I'm, I know I'm using the word without in a different way than it's used here, but I think it applies. They are without, with the, it means they're not in the group or in New Jerusalem. They're not in the, the Revelation 22, 14 group. They're in the 20, Revelation uh, uh, 22, 15 group. They're without. In Ephesians 2, 12, it says that at that time, now this is talking about Gentiles uh, that were lost, and now they're saved. Now they're, now they're part of the church. Uh, uh, Ephesians 2, 12, that at that time you were without Christ. So they didn't have Christ, okay? But we're going to see this, uh, in a second. That's also they're not in Christ. If you're not, if you don't have Christ, you are not in Christ. If you're if you're saved, you're in Christ. Everybody that can hear me today or might hear the this uh, on a future uh, uh, viewing of the video, if you've trusted Christ as your Savior, the only reason you're going to heaven is what Jesus Christ did on the cross. You are in Christ. You're not without Christ anymore. If you haven't done that, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, you are without Christ. 
Okay. That at that time you were without Christ. In other words, before you were saved, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So you're without Christ, you're without God. And that's without God in the world. Uh, having God in the world is a, is a far better, a far cry better than not having God in the world, still being in the world. Verse 13 says, but now, but now, now that you're saved, in Christ Jesus, in other words, saved people, the only ones that are in Christ Jesus are saved people, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So although, although uh, the word without is used slightly different, or it is used different, I should say, in the Ephesians 2 passage, I think it helps us understand the uh, Revelation uh, 22, 15 passage, 14 and 15 passage a little bit. Because if you don't have Christ, you are without Christ. If you don't have Christ, you're without, you're not in that group that has right to go into the, into the, and, and access the, uh, the tree of life in, 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 uh, in verse 14. And go in and, and may enter in through the gates into the city. All right, let's go ahead and stop there with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, do thank Thee again for this opportunity to open Thy Word, to consider what we've seen out of it. Pray that Thou would uh, uh, give us an opportunity to be a witness of Thee. And pray that give us a nice time in fellowship, bring us back safely another time. Pray that Thou would use it all to Thy glory. And we ask it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.